I realize I st I'm starting to do more projects where I'm building multiple pieces. So I could get by when I was doing a single custom piece. I, it wasn't like a lot of material to move around if I had to move it to different sites or operations here in the shop. But um, I'm, I can really see the usefulness of having one for when you're dressing parts and sizing things for any given project. It also helps a lot because when you start to get all these parts you're building for a given project, they tend to clutter up horizontal surfaces, like maybe another setup bench you have or something like that. So I've got this one project on the other side of the room where that's exactly what's happened. I've got this nice table. I want to get those parts off there and onto the cart where I can move them where we're ready for assembly. But I want to show you, I was going through uh, George Nakashima's book, and uh, he, was, he was making slab top tables before they were popular, like they are now. And uh, he's, anyway, his shop was in New Hope, Pennsylvania, still is. His daughter, Mira, runs it now. And I was flipping through, and I'm looking at the different part, things in his shop, and this particular picture caught my eye because he has a very clever, simply made shop cart right here. Can you pick that up okay on the thing? So if you can see it, I did some scale trying to figure out approximately what sizes this were, these were. But you just have a top, a mid shelf that's justified toward the top a bit. So you have a larger area in the bottom. And then you have a bottom shelf with your casters they look like about three, three or four inch is fine. Um, and then all he did was he just <laughs> cut those pieces. It looks like almost like one inch particle board he has there. And then he took a piece of plywood and I, in scaling this, this is about nine or 10 inches wide. And he just dadoed it at the top, the middle, and the bottom here. Well, it's more of a rabbit at the top, I guess, but with the same setup, so all he did was he screwed these on at the corners, just four of them. And it created, I'm sure, it's a very rigid, useful cart. It clearly spent a lot of time and got a lot of use in his shop. When you look at the way the corners are all beaten down and worn off and look at all the wear, wear and tear. But um, it, I'm sure it served him very well. But look at all these billets up here, ready for legs or something for a project. So I, I almost built this kind. I almost was going to show you that. But I, as much as I like it, I don't like the, um, the way that this panel is so wide and it kind of blocks a bit of the access there. Um, so I decided I'm going to build one with corners uh, rather than solid wood posts. I'm going to go with the plywood and try to be really utilitarian about it and bang it out. So let me show you what we've got for our plan. All right, so here's the George Nakashima one that I drew out. And I decided I wanted my cart to be 20 inches wide and 32 inches long. So if I was building the Nakashima, that would be a pretty cool one to make. And you can imagine how fast that is. It's so quick and dirty to make that thing. Just sizing your panels, running the dados, and then you could glue and nail it or screw it together like he did. And then, but down below here is a diagram of what I want to build. So there'll be none of this kind of blocked access on the side. So I'm going to have it very similar to his with a top plywood, then a mid shelf, and then a lower one. And I'm going to put like a reinforcement, flip a piece of plywood on edge um, and rip it like an inch and three quarters to stiffen up and really give that shelf some rigidity. And also by making it wider like that, I'm just going to build this as a, a shelf unit and then make like an L-shaped corner 
that that will just get glued and nailed to. So it'll be really kind of fast to make and having that larger surface there with the glue will give it more rigidity from um, racking. I'm not going to do any kind of datoing or anything like that. So it makes it pretty simple to figure out. Uh, and then I'm going to put some casters on the bottom, like similar to these. But um, there you go. Now let me show you the, I did a diagram. Hold this as still as you can. Okay. This is a very simple sketch, but I was just trying to get a, a general idea of how I was going to lay this out and how much I could get out of a sheet of plywood. So I need my top, my two mid shelves, and then I needed these cuts for um, for the corners and all those strips to brace and reinforce the shelves. Anyway, it ends up coming into this third, this third here. And I think if you were clever, you could get, you might be able to get it all without getting into this third and build it actually with two thirds of a sheet. So if you wanted to build three carts, you can do it with two sheets. If not two, you'll need just a little bit more plywood. Um, so they're pretty economical. The sheet of plywood I picked up, I got it for 35 bucks. It's nothing special. It's just kind of uh, basic um, plywood, you know, from, where did I get it? I got it from Home Depot. So it's, it's some cheap stuff. <laughs> But they do have, of course, maple plywood. You can spend $50, $60, $70 a sheet. But there's no reason to for something like this. You're just, it's a very kind of, you just want it to be relatively strong and, and flat and smooth. So it's graded enough where there's not a lot of knots. So if you got $35 in your sheet of plywood, and then picking up some wheels like this, these are three-inch wheels. I actually ordered these. I got these off of Amazon. We'll put a link to them if you'd like. Um, these are $20. And um, then some bolts to, to really get them on there. And these are inch and a half, quarter inch, I believe, or 5 sixteenths. I think they're 5 sixteenths, but really nice heavy thread. And those will anchor these babies right in there. And I've got washers too. So this bag, I think it was like between six or eight bucks. So if you think of all that, that's like 40 and another 20, that's 60, 60 to $65. Um, now that's two thirds of a sheet. So it's 20, actually about $20 uh, for, the, for the plywood if you're building more than one and then 20 for the wheels, and then once you got here. So about 45, 40 to $50, you can build this nice utility card. We're gonna build this together. I've never actually finished this and seen it together. So we'll see what it looks like um, in short order. So let's get started. Um, I'm just gonna demonstrate how I do the corners on one of them. So. The way I wanted my corners, I wanted to be two and three quarters square. So I ripped one piece or four pieces, two and three quarters. And then to make the, the corner, I just needed a two inch piece. So that once that's attached, it will be relatively the same on both sides because I've got that quarter inch. So I'm just going to glue this on and nail it. But you know, you're probably thinking already, well, that's kind of shaky. You're going to glue it and nail it, and it's going to be slipping around. And that is a problem. Like, once you put glue on there, it gets kind of greasy, and you want to line it up nice and have it all set. So I'm going to show you a technique for that in just a second. But I just wanted to show you, before we get into that, a little story stick that I made. Um, this is for... Actually, I'm going to be using these wheels that I already had for this first one. Um, but this shows the overall height. I'm going to build mine 34 inches high. That's a little lower than my bench, um, but that's a good height. You could go anywhere. You know, if you want yours 32, 33. You also want to think about the infeed on your planer 
and the outfeed, because this will be really useful to have two carts. You load up your materials on one side of your plane, or you can feed them in. And when they come out on the other side, you're just putting them on another cart. And you wheel that around, you switch them up, and you run it again. So I've got it at 34. And then here's my inch and 3 quarter strengthener, or apron piece. And then I've got a second shelf here. And this is going to sit inside the corner block. And then I've got my bottom drawn down here. And I've indicated here, here's the shelf, and then here's the, um, the apron piece. And that's actually the bottom of my cabinet. The rest is going to be taken up by the wheel. So this is a little filler, filler block, about an inch thick I'm going to put. Um, a little piece of plywood in there, and then the, the wheel will get mounted here. So it'll end up sitting at that height, and it'll give me my 34. All right, you happy there? <laughs> Camera ladies, intense tonight on getting the best shot for you guys. All right, so. Here, here, back to our corner block. This is, um, I want to make this joint. Now, you could use biscuits to help you. You could run a little biscuit slot here and here, and that would keep it from slipping around. And I would maybe do that, but, you know, sometimes I just find it's faster to just rip a groove on the table saw. And what I'll do before that is I'll rip these cherry strips that are about three quarters of an inch wide and just a little thinner than the saw curve. So you can rip these or you can rip them and run them through your sander until they fit into the saw curve relatively easy. Because if you make them too tight when you get glue in there, it's a problem. So let me show you how I do this and we'll glue one up. So. What I do is I, I run a, a groove on a piece of scrap, and then I'll rip these strips, and like I said, you can sand them to thickness until they fit, but not, not super tight. See, there's just a little bit of wiggle room there. That's all you want. And I raise the blade to 3 eighths of an inch high, and I set it away from the fence about 5 sixteenths. Okay, so it's going to be like this. So what I want to do is mark this piece. Let's see. Okay, I got my pencil. This has a little bow in it, so I'm going to uh, I'll use this side. So I'm going to rip the groove here, and then this one I want to put on this way. So what I'm going to do is run. See that groove? That's going to be ripped here, and then. I want it to be, end up being flush, so I know that groove is a little off center. So I got to make sure I have the face to the fence here, okay? So here's my face, and I'm going to run that in the edge, and this will be flat, and we'll see what we get. Here we go. All right, and what's great about that technique is you don't, you don't need a, uh, a biscuit cutter. You don't have to set up a router or anything. It's just really fast, but it gives you a super strong spline joint. It's like a tongue and groove, just a long spline. So I'm going to use my nail gun and glue, basically, for all of this. This is that 18-gauge um, nail gun that comes in so handy when you're building jigs or now shop fixtures like a cart. So we'll put a link to this 
gun too if you like this. This is the Grex gun. It's very comparable to the Senko. They're both higher end type guns. They're really, once you have one, you'll think, how did I ever live without it? But um, watch, it, I mean, watch how fast this goes. So now I'm just going to put a little glue in the slot. And I'm going to put a little bit in the other one. And then I'll just take the spline. Now when I made the spline, I cut it a little shorter so I wouldn't have to fuss with that. It's just like a 16th, excuse me, so shorter. That, I'm going to just set it right in. I'm going to put a little on the spline. So this becomes a really strong corner just by doing this quick method. Now I'm going to set it in. And I'm feeling on the end so it look, feels just dead flush. And that feels awesome right there. You don't even have to clamp this because we're going to use our... 18 gauge nailer. So what I'm going to do is just turn it up like this. So now I can press right down. I'm nicely aligned. I can just make sure everything's flush. Feels good. Now I'm just going to hold pressure down and shoot up. I'm using one and a quarter brad. So I'm just making sure it's flush here and I'm pressing down and shooting in this corner. Notice how I'm not, it's not sliding around. It's flush. It's a very quick method, but it's also creating a really strong corner. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck for this short little exercise of going to the table saw and ripping those strips. If you're going to make a bunch of corners, which I did, it's, you get a lot of uh, efficiency as you go through it. So there we go. I got that one. That's it. There you go. Look how tight that is. We got nice squeeze out. When that sets up, it's going to be really strong. All right, so just going to get that little bit of glue out of there. Now, if you've ripped this and your, and your saw blade is 290, you can check it. Look at that. It is dead on. So you create this very easy, strong joint. So we'll need four of these and I cut these to length using my my little uh, storyboard here and that's going to be the bottom. That bottom shelf is going to line up flush with the bottom of this and it's going to sit inside the corner and then this one will sit inside the corner and then the top one the the apron will sit inside the corner, but the top is going to overlap and be full size here. So the top piece of plywood will be the full 20 by 32. But these lower shelves are going to be smaller by the thickness of two pieces of this plywood. Now this plywood is not quite three quarters of an inch thick. It's like a 30 second smaller. So I built those shelves um, 18 and a half plus a 16th, so 18 and 9 sixteenths to give me the, that shelf, 18 and 9 sixteenths, and then the length was 30 and 9 sixteenths, so that my top outer dimension of these corners should be 20 by 32. Should be. <laughs> but you know what? It's a sharp fixture, so you have to relax a little. It's actually uh, not a big deal. So I'm going to make one of those shelves now. And for that, I'm using this pre-dimension material. Now this is the one and three quarter dimension now to build one of those reinforced shelves. So here's a pre-sized panel. I already cut this to the uh, 18 and 9 sixteenths by, what did I just say? 30 and 9 sixteenths. And so I'm going to, I want this frame 
to end up being flush when it's joined together with the outside. So what I did was I, I cut all these pieces to length less one thickness of plywood so that the plywood is going to overlap like that on each corner. And I'll just have it overlapping in the same direction right on around. And then we'll nail it to the shelf, which will square it up. So let's go ahead and knock that together. So I'm just getting where they're bowing out. So you'll see why in a minute. It'll help them press in. All right, so here, this is going to overlap this way. This one's going to overlap this way, like that. I'm doing this right. <laughs> and like that, OK? Oh, no, I don't. I got that wrong. No, I'm doing that wrong. It goes like this, OK? I could have done it that other way, but I had to make it more complicated. <laughs> Actually, it's not complicated at all. So I'm going to do it like this. So every corner is overlapping slightly like that. And all these should end up to that dimension. So I'm going to fold this down, fold this one down, and that one down. So now I know I need glue here. I need some glue here. There. Each of the corners, just like that. Nothing fancy. Get the gun. Still using the inch and a quarter brads here. And then I'll flip this up and just kind of rub it in quick before the glue drips all over the place. So I'm working to get this flush. And then I'm going to hold this in and just shoot it so everything's flush, everything's good. I'll give it three and come down the end. Same thing. Now there's a lot of ways you can build your shop couch. You could do it with solid wood. Um, you can get, you can build them with drawers. Um, some people, you know, multi-purpose them. So, you know, you basically could build a shop cart for your router, router table. So this one, though, I'm just pretty much thinking I want to use it for parts, for, for uh, processing parts and having projects more organized. All right, so I'm going to come down here, get it flush at the end. In this corner, last of all. So we don't really need the uh, spline to do this. You could do that, that same method on the table saw, but it's really not necessary. Because once you've got that, now we're going to, we don't even have to square this up because we've already got our square panel, that's going to go on top, and we're going to square it up by just getting it flush all around when, and then nail it on. So I just need a little glue on there. And this will create a really strong shelf, kind of overkill in a way. It's stronger than the Nakashima one, but he used, it looks to me like one inch thick particle board, so, because those shelves didn't look like they were sagging, but I think if you just used three quarter, you made it long and had no apron like that, they would sag over time. And plus, plywood just, a lot of times it, it is already bent. So I'm going to just flush up this corner really nice, it feels good right there, and go ahead and hit it. And I'll come down this end. I'll just tack each corner. That feels really good. So I cut all these things to length using the crosscut sled on the regular table saw. I would have used the felder, but I had it <laughs> buried by a project in front of it. But um, whatever you have, you want to just 
have an accurate stop system and you really it's really good to have a a crosscut sled to make panels like this. All right, I'll hit this corner. Man, everything's lining up very nice. You'd almost think we already did this, but this is the this is going to be the first one going together. So I'm flush here. So the brads, I mean, they almost act like clamps in many situations. If you're using glue, you tack it on there, and it's basically holding it together, and then the glue takes over and becomes the main strength of the joint. So these are springing out a little bit, so see how I can easily flex them in to be flush. If I had put them the other way, it's harder to pull them out to position. So I get my corners first, and then I can, so see how I'm sticking out there, I can just flex it right in until it's nice and flush. That feels good right there. Go ahead and hit it. That's it. Woo! There's a shelf. So I'd make two of these, and one would be the bottom, and one would be the mid shelf. This is that smaller dimension. Now for the top one, we need just the frame of the apron, and then the top will be attached to that. So I already nailed together and glued together a frame, and to make sure it was square, I used this shelf just as a guide while it cured. Now, I'll be able to flex a little, so it's not a big deal, but it did hold it in position. So I've got my top frame, my mid one, and then I've got this frame I already I already made this one. So this one is identical to what we just did, except I added those little spacer blocks for the feet. All I did, I mean the casters, all I did was take um, a piece of three quarter inch ply, and I realized I wanted it uh, like an inch thick in there so that the caster would clear this lip. And I, so I put a quarter inch and an inch, put a little glue in there, and just nailed that right down. Then I've already set the feet, so I wouldn't fuss around with that too much. All I did was place the casters in position where they would work well. I'm trying to get them outside now. The ones that I ordered online, um, they, each one is um, a full spinning swivel, yeah. And then the, on the other end, I'm going to have fixed, but it won't matter if you use all swivels. The swivel pack that I told you about, that I, I'll give you the link to, comes with two of them have a lock on them. So I believe you could get that. So you'll make sure you position it far enough back that you can access that lock. So I'm going to pre-drill. I've already hit the other end. I just marked with a circle once I had the location. And then I took my awl and I made a good first impression and then I'll drill these babies out now I'm gonna wait to put the wheels on I could have finished drilling this after, but I just want to explain that whole thing. So there you go. So we've got identical size piece to that. Now we're ready to assemble our cart.
I've got four corner posts all set to go, just like we, we had the others. And, you know, you can set these up however you like, but what I'm going to do is put the bottom shelf on first. Make sure you get <laughs> that on the bottom. And I'm going to line it up. This bottom edge is going to be flush with the bottom of my uprights, the way I had it laid out. So I'll put, I'm going to put the full piece on the sides and the half cut on each end. So let's go like this. All right, so I'm going nice and flush at the bottom. I just want to check, see how this works. It looks nice. Beautiful. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and get some glue in there first, and then I'll knock it together. So I'm going to move back a bit, get some glue here and here. This is nice. Uh, you could screw it together if you don't have a nail gun, you just pre-drill and you'd be running screws in. Um, but boy, that Brad nailer does definitely, it's fun. I feel like Norm, you know? <laughs> it's the one time I get to enjoy that. All right, so I'm gonna get this flush here and that's sitting nicely in the corner. Happy with that. Go ahead and tack it. What would Norm do? <laughs> He'd say something right there. There we go. Tack the other corner. Beautiful. All right, flush with the bottom. Now, um, I think I'll go ahead and set my mid shelf. Uh, to do that, if you look at our story stick again, we've got, now we've got our bottom shelf in place. This is actually the bottom of our cabinet. So I want to set this next shelf this high. Now I'm giving myself about nine inch space here, very similar to the Nakashima. I don't think I want to bend that far and I won't be putting a lot of heavy stuff. If I have something larger, it'd be nice to have that larger space. So if I measure right from the top of this shelf here on my storyboard, I come up, I'm 14 and a quarter to the bottom of that. So what I did was I just cut some little spacers and these are, I believe, 14 and a quarter. So let's go ahead and tack those in. Those will make easy work of spacing these things. And I could put a little glue on there if I was anal about it, but uh, I don't really have to. I'm just going to nail, nail this in as a spacer. And then hit this one. making sure I'm sitting right on the cabinet. Okay, that looks great. Get the next shelf in there. What's that? So this is gonna sit right in here and sit right down on that. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get some glue in there all right, so we'll put a little glue right in here. Little glue right there. What's nice about these projects is you can get them done in a day or less, and you'll be on a roll. All right, there we go. That feels good. Sitting in nice. Wow, this is coming together. Better than I thought. 
You never know, right? That's awesome. Sitting right there on that spacer. I could square this up, but I think it's going to be close to self-squaring. But let's see. I think I'll put that top shelf in. Now this is going to just be flush with the top in the same way we had the bottom is flush with the bottom. Oh, nice fit. I think that's good squeeze out. <laughs> that's pretty bad. Uh, okay. There we go. That's good. So I'm just going, everything feels nice and flush. Just go ahead and tack it. This one I could even hit over here. Let me just clean up some of that squeeze out here. And we'll get the other side on. All right. Let's see if these fit. I'm going to have to get that spacer block in there. So there's a little flex. I'll put my flat side out here. I'm going to have to move once I get the glue on here. So I'm just going to rehearse my moves here. I'll flex that in. That's looking good. All right, let's go. Set this here. And I'm going to have to move fast. Here we go. This is type on three, though, so it gives you a little extra time. I don't need quite as much glue as that other corner. Feels like it's going to be solidly built. Even though there's no, technically no, like, interlocking joinery here, it's all overlapping and with good glue surface. So it should be plenty strong. I do want to check it for square, just for kicks. <laughs> wow, that's right on the money. Why is that? All right, here we go. Set this here. I'm going to get the bottom tacked first, and then I'll get the spacer in, and then tack off the middle and the top. All right, here we go. Nice and flush. Feels good. Oops, I'm ran out of that sleeve. Okay, get those spacers in there. Make sure that's sitting down. That's good. They look structural, but they're not. Just to give us sitting on the bottom. And one more. Okay, with that set, now I can pull that shelf down. So it sits right solidly on there and nest it nice into the corner with the glue. And we are in business.
That feels good. All right, I got to just move this a little bit. Oh, it's starting to set up, but not all the way, thank God. All right, nice and flush. Feels good. Let's hit it. All right, everything feels nice and flush and corner's good now. Just got to nail that other side that was on the table. <laughs> Starting to see our cart. How do you like this one? You like these? No, I love anything. That, I know you like organization, yeah, <laughs> containers and stuff. I was wondering what a cart did for your soul there. Like All right, I think I've nailed that enough. Now let's just go ahead and get the top on and then we'll get the casters on so we can sit it there now the top is already sized I did size it earlier I knew we wouldn't have time to do all that and then some too but so I'm just gonna get this in place oh it's so nice it's flush can't believe it so that little extra sixteenth um, on this lower shelf made the difference I mean it's not a big deal you could just trim it or get a sander on this and it would be good to go but I'm gonna put a little glue on that too and we'll nail her down corner down the length so I gotta make sure I step in at least an inch on those sides when I nail it. So I hit that rail. Now I'll first get the corners again. And this will be self-squaring as well. Let's see. Feels awesome. These guys are sharing some good ideas about where they get their materials to build their carts. Oh, really? Where? You mean wheels? Wheels and uh, uh, collect discarded 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter engineered flooring for shelf tops lighter and more durable, more attractive than the plain ply. Um, and they're talking about the difference value of the two fixed versus the two swivel, two fixed, four swivel. Oh yeah. Well, trust me, I, <laughs> I put a lot of miles on those moving carts, but all in and around Boston, it was such a good time those days. John says he buys furniture dollies from Harbor Freight and repurposes the casters. Oh, how much are the dollies? They must be super cheap. Well, these wheels are Chinese made, so. Oh, I didn't catch this question from Rick earlier. Have you heard of cut list for cutting sheet goods in an efficient manner? Oh yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't actually do enough with that. To get it, but wow, look at that, huh? Man, 
Is that a strong card? So I'm going to flip it. And we'll get back to our underside here. Now we can get our wheels in position. So got all my, this will just take 40 minutes. <laughs> no, <laughs> it won't take long. Um, I'm going to ratchet these in. Here's an old trick that Pug used. I pre-drilled those pretty good, but we used to always put beeswax on the screws. I just want to see if it makes much difference. But it's amazing what beeswax will do to help, like if you you feel that binding, that's stuff. Okay. Somebody's stuck. What's the that? Scrapyard has casters in the steel pile, pile 20 cents a pound. Is that right? Am I saying that right? 20 cents a pound? 20, well, it says 20 C a pound. Maybe I'm... Wow. That's crazy. All right. I'm just going to get them all started, and then I'll go to town here. Yeah, John said on sale the furniture dollies from Harbor Freight are less than ten dollars. Less than twenty? Ten dollars. What? The wheels look like these. Those are um, that. Those you get for twenty. That's with the shipping. So maybe it's the same. You know, it's one of those prime deals. Twenty cents, he says. Wow, um, that's crazy. Brandon says you need a socket holder for your drill. A socket? Oh yeah, that would be, that would be nice. You know what? I come to think of it, I don't know if I have. You could build it, right? I think I have one, but it's been so long. I guess you have to. What? Are you going to do all of those? Well, how am I going to roll my cart? All right, I'll just do one two. Or two in <laughs> Okay. Might not want to see you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The anticipation. All right, I'll just put two on each one. Except for that first one. See, that one I didn't put wax on. And it's harder, definitely. You need somebody to have to tell us a story. Yeah. Oh, back. Peter says they're rated for a thousand pounds. Wow. Oh, these are. Shoot, I got these at Home Depot. I think these. I think they say. Oh, 175 pounds each. So almost. Of course, my cart weighs 400 pounds. Okay, hon. All right, I'm just going to put, I'm going to take this one out. I don't want to have to do all that. I should have the power set up. Are you taking it out? Huh. Well, I don't want to spend all that time. Just get these two and down here. <laughs> Lot says, how's your missing tooth now? Oh, <laughs> I'm not feeling any pressure right now, but. I don't want to screw it up and go back there. That was the first tooth I ever had pulled. I have kind of like a big mouth, so all my wisdom teeth have, have been right at home <laughs> until yesterday. <laughs> oh, gosh. <Okay>. So... <laughs> This is the part where you are anticipating the um, reward here in just a second. Once you get these on, 
Will says the wax ring for a toilet is a good cheap source for wax. Oh, they get the great idea. Jay says if you had a socket extension for in the impact driver, you would have already been done. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Uh, Jay. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're right. I don't, uh, you know what, I haven't, I should have looked at my toolbox earlier. It's so rare that I have to drive this type of hex head that I wasn't thinking clearly. Can you just put one in each and just... Oh, I'm putting one more in. Okay. This, this is the second to last. Rick says you're making him tired just watching this. It's not that yes. hard, actually. All right, that's it. Let's take a look. Woo! I'm in business now. Okay. Look at that. Oh man, can you see that? I'm going to load it up. Come right over here. Wow, I'm loving that. Nice size too, huh? So I'm really happy with the design, you know, it wasn't, um, I was just working it out, trying to figure out how thick I wanted these things, but that's nice. I and mean, that's a good amount of space right here. And then where you're not going to bend so much, you can put anything heavier or maybe a toolbox with your hex drive in there. <laughs> so that's, it i'm so psyched i'm gonna make actually two more of these um i've got the materials going here i didn't have quite enough i didn't have two full sheets of plywood but um that's gonna be really great so you'll be seeing these get beat up maybe like george nakashima's in the background of uh, a lot of projects to come all right everybody well thank you so much for being here we did something good for the shop and it feels good. Now we're ready to get some real work done.